Hello and welcome back. The topic in this lecture that I'm going to discuss is failure recovery of stateful applications. We'll go over the tactics that you can use uh, when building stateful applications on cloud-based platforms. We'll see more details shortly. Let's start by a quick recap of what we mean by stateful and stateless applications here. In case of stateful applications, there is a storage of some contextual information from one request to another request. That is, bef uh, before a second request can be successfully processed in a, in a particular session of the user, there has to be some mechanism to remember the context. That is what we call the statefulness of the application. That is, when it is trying to remember some context of the requests. Whereas in stateless cases, stateless applications, there is no such need to remember the context between multiple requests in a given user session interaction with the application. Now with this thing in mind, let's look at the recovery options for a stateful instance. There are multiple tactics which are possible to build recovery from failures in case of a stateful application. It depends on where the state is stored whether it is within the VM itself or it is somewhere on an external device. And also important factor is the application's tolerance for loss of computation. What this means is that let's say when a failure occurs in the application and it has been detected, before you bring the application to its normal operational state, there may be more requests coming into the application. And before the normalcy of the application is restored, those, those requests might get lost. So how much is the tolerance for these kind of lost requests in case of a particular application that also has an important impact on your tactic that you implement or choose for building the recovery options into the application. And another thing is the availability of VM check pointing. Since we are talking about cloud-based platforms, so we will be focusing on tactics which make use of cloud specific features or technologies and VM checkpointing is one such thing. So the basic idea here is that the most recent state of the application's data is somewhere stored and after you detect the failure in the application, we try to restore the application state back to the last known good state. So key thing here is that the state is stored somewhere, whether within the VM itself or somewhere external to it, and the ability to somehow monitor the failure and react to that event of failure so that you can restore the saved state back. Let's look at the first tactic. We assume that this application is built on a cloud-based platform by using some sort of, let's say, an infrastructure as a service cloud. And we assume that here the state, the application state is kept inside the, is stored inside the virtual machine itself. An example of this kind of an application could be, a simple example could be uh, a web application which implements a chat room functionality where multiple users are able to chat online by using some sort of a text-based uh, uh, chatting mechanism. That is, they are able, able to type text messages and they are able to see the entire conversation in one window. In that kind of an application, you have to keep state of the entire session, entire chat session, let's say. And this chat session information is stored by the application uh, somewhere in the same virtual machine itself where your actual application, this web application is deployed. So that means that there is no dependency on any external device. That is, the state information data is not saved anywhere external to the virtual machine. And virtual machine itself may have some virtual hard disk, etc. Right? So in that sense, the state information is kept inside the VM. So that's the assumption. We'll see in a subsequent tactic where uh, there, there is an external device involved also. But for, so for this tactic, let's look at the case where the state is stored inside the VM itself. And so the main point here is that you are able to checkpoint the virtual machine state on regular intervals. And once you detect a failure by some means, you can always go back and restore from the last good known state. Now, what might happen is before you detect the failure and bring the application state back to normal, there may have been users who would have typed some messages. Those messages will be lost. Now let's look at the 
detail of this kind of a scenario. So here you will have let's say the application the important component of this solution is that you have a storage where your application is keeping the uh, state information and there has to be some monitor component which monitors the application for any failure scenarios and it has to interact with a VM checkpointing component which can be provided by the infrastructure as a service cloud provider or in the virtualization layer itself for example, VMware has checkpointing facilities and similarly XCN and other virtualization layers have facilities which allow you to do virtual machine checkpointing. And I would like to flag out that when you do virtual machine checkpointing, you have to have the original good known image in order to reconstruct a particular state of the virtual machine. So the solution works like once the failure is detected by the monitor, it can instruct the infrastructure to restore the virtual machine from the last good known checkpointed state and restart the virtual machine again. In this scenario, it is important to first identify a failure scenario. You can typically implement some operation in the, uh, in the application itself, which can act as a query point for the monitor to talk to so that it can determine whether the application is alive in a good state or not. So periodically it may be let's say a simple URL in our example chat room case which the monitor can repeatedly ping or request and if it doesn't receive the expected HTTP response it will determine that the application is not alive and it will decide that the application has failed in which case it will go back to the monitor uh, it will go back to the VM checkpointing component and try to restore the last good known state back into the virtual machine. Now let's look at a second variant of this tactic. It's a small variation from what we already just spoke about. In this case, instead of saving the application state internal to the virtual machine storage, the state information is stored on some external device. And this kind of uh, storage is done at regular intervals. The application does it at regular intervals. And again, someone, some mechanism like a monitor detects the failure scenario as we just spoke the this can be done by pinging a particular URL that application expose uh, that app that the application exposes for example and if the response is not the expected response the monitor can determine that the application has failed and once the failure is detected monitor will check for the recent state on the external device and it will again resume from the state which it will restore by reading the external device if you notice that in this case the recovery mechanism has to be coded or designed into the application itself and particularly it is not using any virtualization or cloud specific technology or features in order to do the uh, saving of the state or restoring of the state and again in this case also the requests that arrive between the time of failure and until you restore the application back to normalcy uh, those requests will be typically lost so this is how the solution might look like. Again, we have a virtual machine here taken uh, from, let's say, some infrastructure as a service cloud provider. You have the application uh, deployed into the virtual machine. The storage is external here, as we see, external to the virtual machine. And it is the application's responsibility here to make sure that the application state is periodically saved over here in the storage and the monitor component will constantly in a periodic manner watch for any failure state to happen on the application and once it detects the failure it can again instruct the application back to load its state load its last good known state from the external storage now we saw that in both the previous tactics there was a loss of certain requests which were arriving at from the time uh, the failure was detected until the application was restored back to the normal state. In order to address this particular issue of uh, lost requests, application can log the incoming requests also to the external device. Particularly this can be done in the tactic 2 case. Now on detection of a failure, what can happen is the application can resume first the state restored from the external device and then also read and play the logged requests back so that to bring the system to the same state 
in which it would have been in case those requests were not lost. Now a requirement here for this solution to work is that this logging of the requests to external device and its acknowledgement or the confirmation to the client has to be atomic. That is from the time the client's request is received, you do not commit back that request until the request's receipt is logged on to your external device by the application. However, as you would have guessed, this logging of the incoming requests to external device can certainly have a slowing effect on the application's performance, particularly how the clients experience the requests. Okay, so just to summarize, we have seen a basic tactic and two variants of it when you want to do failure recovery in case of stateful applications. The idea, the central idea here is number one, first you have to define what is the failure state, what, how do you detect the failure. Uh, in your application and then have a component which monitors your application constantly in a periodic manner so that it identifies whether the application happens to be in a failed state. And secondly, your application should also have some logic built into it so that it on a periodic basis is able to save its state to some storage and the storage can be internal to the virtual machine on which you have deployed the application or that storage can be external to the virtual machine. And once the monitor component detects the failure, it can instruct appropriate component. For example, it can instruct the, in the first tactic that we saw, in that case, it can instruct the underlying infrastructure as a service layer to restore back the checkpointed virtual machine image and then start from there. Whereas in the second case, this kind of a logic is implemented, has to be implemented within the application itself, where the application will go back and load from the external storage, the last good known state of the application and start from that point onwards. And as we saw in both the cases, there is a possibility that certain requests will be lost, particularly the requests that arrive uh, from the time when the failure happened in the application and until the time when the application was restored back to its normal state. And we just saw that you can avoid these lost requests by also logging the re incoming requests to some sort of an external device. And then later playing those requests back after you have restored from the last good known state of the application. And the overhead in this case is that your clients will slow down a little bit because the logging operation has to be atomic with the acknowledgement that goes back to the client that the client's request has been re received. So that's pretty much it for uh, this lecture. In the next one, we will look at the recovery tactics for a stateless instance situation. Thank you.